So before we leave LLCs, which I think we're going to do, right? Uh, or FinCEN. I, or... I, I don't know. I don't know. What did you want to ask? Okay, great. Um, well, for the first time, well, first of all, I want to say I 100% agree with you. What I did was put into the chat that the more that we allow the government overreach to take our rights, pretty soon we're not going to have any. So we really have to step back. And I, I, I just, you know, advise anyone that's on this chat to contact you before you make a decision. Because, you know, it's like, anyway, that's what I wanted to say. But the, the really quick question I had was um, on the LLC, because for the first time, I think, you know, I'm, I filled out a W-9 because I'm going to be working with another company. And, it, and I just wanted to say in the sample that you show in your instructional docs, it says to... Um, uh, check the box for a limited liability company partnership. Now, my understanding was it was a sole proprietorship LLC, a different box to check. So I just wanted to run that by you and make sure that I didn't have some kind of a definition crossed. No, the W-9, I mean, the uh, read me first file tells you what to do on the W-9. Just do that literally. Okay, good. Yeah, you, yeah. I, there's literally a copy of it, but it confused me because it said partnership, <laughs> and I was like, okay. Th then <laughs> use that. <laughs> right, I know. Okay. All right. You know, I'm just checking because I know we can right. all do like, okay, you know, so, I'm a proofreader, so, you know, sometimes we I know, can make okay. it. So I've had people criticize me over the years and say, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Well, no, I, I totally believe you do. It's okay. But... It's, it's okay, but they don't understand what I'm doing something for. And my focus right. is on it's financial risk. And and you've got all this out there, this this noise, this these fools trying to get your stuff, right? So when, when you give a W-9 out, you want to say, or you apply for an EIN, you want to say it's a partnership, it's an it's an LLC and it's a partnership or something. I forget how. I, and then when you talk to the bank, you're going to say it's a sole member LLC and then you talk it to says, somebody else. It says one thing. It's, it's like a member yeah. managed one yeah, person me thing, man. right? When you're applying for the EIN, but then the W-9, right? It says it says you, you put the P for partnership. So that's all. I'm just trying to understand LLC it. for partnership, right. And the reason why I do that is because it, prompts the least amount of questions and it does not change your LLC. Ch disclosing all this information in different ways. It. If, if you if you collect all the records we're disclosing regarding your LLC, they're all going to conflict with each other. So what? It's how we get the thing open the fastest with the least questions. And That's right. what really, yeah, what really establishes what your LLC is, is your accounting practice and what you disclose and your operating agreement, what you disclose in your articles. The articles rule. The articles are the law of the company. When you publish those articles, you can tell the bank anything you want. It that's doesn't right. matter. You can lie to them because it's their problem. They have to go look and see what the articles say. And that's why that's I tell right. a lot of people, the <laughs> bank's asking them the same information that's in the articles. And, and my client's like, what do I tell them? And I say, well, you already gave them the articles, right? Yeah, um, you just tell them it's <laughs> in the articles. I wasn't even, I was yeah. not even questioned by that at the bank. I'll tell you. They were like, well, somebody, boom, 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 boom. But anyway. Um, somebody knows what he's doing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The other thing was SS4, which I, I don't, the, um, no, the com SS4, I don't, you know don't what that. that. That's applying for an, a social security number. You don't need that. Well, that's, that's applying for your EIN. So that would be an online thing. I don't. Right. Don't, the company that I'll be W9ing, they were asking for article, the articles, but they were also asking for, um, the, an SS4, which I think is just no, the EIN. No, no, no. They, they don't know the what they're EIN. asking. They ask the wrong thing. What they should be asking for is your EIN approval letter for the company. Got it. Uh, yeah, they don't need that, by the way. Okay, look. Okay, so the W-9 is, here's what it's for. It's certifying the accuracy of the EIN. They don't need the EIN approval letter. They just don't know what they're doing. They just need okay. the W-9 because what happens is when you certify the accuracy of the EIN, you're transferring the liability of, incorrectly reporting onto the company so that you don't have the liability mm -hmm. you want to do a w9 especially right. if you know you're going to get a 1099 yeah right exactly um well you know now that i'm structured as an llc there's no backup withholding there's none of that so and they just need doing, right right so they just need to know that i've got it set up correctly and okay well that's fine i just wanted to uh get it more a little more crystal clear defined so thanks a lot
Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Good question. Thanks. And if there is a tax on the cryptographic currency, can you pay the tax in the currency? No. So there's no tax. In it. Your taxes are the same in Canada. What that means is it comes down to a disposition of the property when the beneficial owner changes, when I sell it. If I sell it for something, dollars, the dollars are being taxed, not the coins. The coins are the property. I don't know if the Canadian government has defined it like our government. Uh, our government defined cryptographic currency as property, which puts it in the same category as gold. And gold is not taxable. The sale of gold is, so dollars are taxable. So I believe that the Canadian system is identical to ours. That What you run into a problem with is you got your KYC, which that's not so much of a problem, but it scares people into reporting a certain way, and that creates a tax liability. And that's what's happening here. So it's, are you saying as long as it remains in the cryptocurrency, it's not taxable? That's correct. It's so if property. we exchange it into Canadian dollars... Then is and once then, it hits our bank account, is that taxable? Yes. Then if it if it's if you if you personally, okay, so you personally have a tax liability by default. If you sell property, uh, and yeah, and you re receive the money for that, the dollars, that is going to be reportable and taxable, and that's when you start factoring in your cost basis and all those numbers. Now, I'll help you out a little bit on that one. Let's say you do that transaction, which by the way, you can avoid all that, but. Let's say you bought some coins and now they're worth a lot more and then you sold them and then you have this gain. No problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would just simply uh, factor in. So it's not, you wouldn't need to keep track of the trades you made between uh, each coin for a period of time. That doesn't matter. What matters is the money that went in and then the money that came out, like a black box in between. This is where people get confused, and the software on, on these exchanges is, I believe, it's wrong. All of it's deliberately wrong. Um, you, your your tax in, in this way, it's cash in, cash out. So if I bought, if I paid cash for some gold, for example, and then I traded it for silver and then gold again, I didn't go into dollars, and then someday I came out into dollars. Okay, so the money I put in is my cost basis and the money I took out, hopefully there's a gain is going to be that minus cost basis is my profit. There's taxable there. Right. But it doesn't matter that I went from Litecoin to Bitcoin, to Bitcoin cash and all around and all these things. Don't keep track of all that. Sounds similar so, to like 1031 exchange in real estate, right? Very much like that. Yes. Very so much. what do people do? So if people want to take profit, you can't buy anything with, um, cryptocurrency now so it doesn't mm -hmm. do any good sitting in the token so what you're saying is regardless once you convert it to canadian dollars u.s dollars it becomes a taxable event if you do that in your name yes because it's going to be on your tax liability yes but not in an llc if you use an llc as a pass-through then it will defer the tax liability there's still a tax liability but it's not reportable it, it doesn't have to be it you can always keep it deferred so let's say i have a nice gain. Uh, I sold my Bitcoin. My LLC owned a thousand dollars of Bitcoin. Now it's worth ten thousand dollars. I sold it. My LLC got the nine thousand or the ten thousand, and then it went off and did something else. Let bought a used car. Okay, so the LLC buys a used car. I didn't buy the used car. The LLC did. And yeah, I'm driving the car around, but the LLC owns the car. So it's I, I took my property from over here and I put it over here. That's one way. Hey, Another way. Yeah. You got a website that describes that anywhere, like in more detail? Go to aceofcoins.club. There's going to be a video series. If not, there should be already videos there already. I talk about this. I've been talking about this for two years at least on the videos. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Jim. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm going to add more detail too as well because you guys have some really good questions. So that prompts me to do more research because I, I got to answer the questions better. John, um, thanks yep. for that. I'm with this group as well. And I just wanted to reaffirm that because the IRS states that when you go from one cryptocurrency to another, if there's any type of profit between those two coins, even though they're both digital currency, that that is a taxable event. So I wanted to get your thoughts on what yeah. they're the keyword. That. The keyword is profit. What is it? Yeah. Okay, how can there be profit when I haven't I haven't converted the property into a taxable thing? 
Like I asked you before, can I pay the tax in the crypto coin? No, they won't accept it. Therefore, I'm not required to go get some dollars. If I don't ever want to use dollars ever again, and I'm only using Bitcoin and Litecoin for the rest of my life, and I have all this profit, they can't make me sell it to pay the tax. So therefore, there isn't a tax liability unless they did something like El Salvador, right? El Salvador said, hey, we're going to make it easy. You could pay your taxes in Bitcoin. What they don't realize, people don't realize, is they just made Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador. They have the right to do that. It's a sovereign nation, right? So now Bitcoin is just like the local currency. You have so to look at that, it that way. So is that like saying, okay, I have a desk as an asset or a computer. And so if I wanted to go buy something from someone else, instead of you using fiat currency, I just said, hey, take this computer. It's worth relative 100 bucks, And so it's not... It's okay, not it's a, almost it's like a, that. You're you're describing a barter exchange, and yeah, there could. So, in a barter exchange where there's actual barter going on, like it's a like a barter system, mm -hmm. the the IRS has, I think it's circular five five nineteen that has to do with this disposition of assets or property, and they do look at those transactions in terms of dollars. So okay. that's a little bit, a little bit more involved, but yeah, I mean. It, if you're bartering and you never go into the dollar, there's there's no duty to go into the dollar so that you can pay the tax. Okay. So yeah, I mean, even in a barter exchange, it all comes down to you reporting. It's how you report. You can create a tax liability when there isn't one by reporting that you have a tax liability under penalty of perjury. They're, they have to accept that. And if, if it's you've made a mistake, too bad. Okay. That's, what, that's what's going on with the cryptos, by the way. They're getting people to report under the accrual based accounting uh, system where they're reporting the value change as taxable with big corporations do that. We don't need to do that cash basis. Instead of we should be reporting on cash basis. Everybody should be that we're talking about right now, cash basis. And we're not gonna have the tax liability. So John, if I'm hearing you correctly for an LLC to go, so I cashed out my crypto, put it in dollars into my LLC. And I would have to, in order to, not have a taxable event or I, I I would have to buy something, buy a house in the LLC, buy a car in the LLC. I couldn't just use the money. You could use the money. What are you going to use it for besides buying a car? You want to buy a toaster? Whatever I want to buy. Okay. Well, okay. Here's how it works. If you dispose of a, some property, maybe it happens to be cryptos, maybe it's gold. You dispose of it, you get some dollars. And then you spend that money on paying off your credit card bills or paying for your mortgage or pay the light bill or buy groceries. That's personal. And that goes to your personal income tax. And that should be reported as other income in the States. It, you can't escape that. It's easier, it's easier to not pay tax on buying a hotel and selling a hotel than a toaster. So regardless, regardless if the dollars came from my LLC. It, does, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So if you use money from anywhere to, to cover a living expense, that's going to be considered your income. Okay. So I think in Canada, we can report it as personal capital gains, not as income. And okay. then we're only taxed on 50%. That's nice. <laughs> so so they, that's why we're not running yeah. any of the crypto investments through our business. Right. I understand that. Yeah. So they, so, yeah. So they, it sounds like they did a favor. <laughs> it sounds like they gave you a favor. But okay. really, I mean, if you structure the way I'm suggesting, you you make it to where it's not in your estate. Okay. That's what I'm showing everyone. You make it so it's not in your estate. The property rights are being held outside of your estate. It's your estate that has the tax liability, you personally. And they say, okay, yeah, it's only half. Okay, fine. I don't like that. I like to keep all my money. <laughs> so. Anyways, but yeah, you have to structure, you have to change the property rights if you want to do that. Otherwise you're, you're cheating, right? You're, you're breaking the law. You got to change the property rights, how you're holding it. You have every right to do that. An example is, let's say I've got hundred thousand us dollars in cryptographic currency on a personal account at an exchange. And I, I hear these ideas and I'm like, wow, I got to do that. That's great. I got my hundred thousand dollars and I got Bitcoin worth over here, right? Just Bitcoin. So I set up a limited liability company at the same exchange, and then I moved the the uh, personal holdings into my LLC holdings. 
Well, I still care about them, right? That's how I know that the beneficial interests have not changed. If the beneficial interests have not changed, there's no sale, there's no disposition, and there's no gain. So I can move them all, all over however I want. A lot of people come to me and they say, hey, John, should I structure it as a loan or this or that? I'm like, no, just move it over. The beneficial interests remain the same. Great. And so you help uh, you help people <laughs> with these things? Yeah, what I'll do is I explain these concepts again, and then we use a structure like in Canada, we'll probably end up using, unless you have something else you're doing, probably going to use an LLC in the States. I mean, the reason being is that your, uh, your government doesn't officially recognize LLCs, but your banks do. So the government will indirectly recognize an LLC. All you have to do is domesticate it there, which they make it kind of easy to do. And that, and so once you have that set up, I can show you how to do the transactions uh, and, and avoid legally avoid the reporting and the tax liability. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then do you have anything to say about, I mean, beyond us potentially setting up an LLC in the U.S.? Is there anything that you have to say about uh, uh, second residencies and you know, foreign Re residency houses. doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, you, you can be a Canadian resident, register a company here. Um, I don't believe you even need a tax number here if all your banking is going to be in Canada. So you would just get the charter here. The articles are published here, registered here, and then you domesticate it in your province. And that's, and then you'll get a tax number there. And that's fine. It makes me nervous to have a like US. <laughs> okay. Well, you could, okay, this is what I was explaining. So we could do something like um, a, a limited partnership or general partnership. I just don't like getting into that because I don't do those normally and it takes a bit of work and then there's more education. I probably just need you to explain a little bit mm -hmm. more or something. Once you understand the basic concepts, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm changing my, the way I'm owning something so that it's outside of my estate. But here, here's a way that I can do that real quick. So if I own this thing, and, and so I'm liable. Like if someone wants to get it from me, I have the right to do whatever I want with this thing, right? But if another guy comes along and says he owns it too, well, then if I owe somebody something, if, if I owe him this, he can't get it from me because this other guy has an interest in it. So by that definition, because now the ownership is outside of my individual exclusive ownership, nobody can touch it until it's released to me individually. And that's the same thing that happens with an LLC and property. Now you can do that with real estate and gold and dollars and anything. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, another quick example. Uh, I've had people call me before where they're, they're being sued, right? In a business like sole proprietor, sole proprietor They're They're set up as a limited liability company, but they're sole proprietor is how they operate. And uh, this one guy was uh, saying he's in the middle of a lawsuit and he's looking for an attorney. And I said, okay, so what's going on? I interview him a little bit. And I say, well, you could fight the case, but your your first problem is cost of litigation because you're a company and you got to hire an attorney because they won't let you represent your interest in the court through your company. Okay, so there's risk number one, cost of litigation. I got to go to court and defend this thing, right? Or do I? Well, the easy solution is amend the article so that you're not the only owner. And once you do that, it takes it away from the, the liability that was coming. And it doesn't change the contract because that ownership, there's no lien established. Nobody ever does that. It's not like collateral on a car. So all I had him do was, was amend the articles and problem solved. His company is protected. He's not though. So there's other things I have to do for him personally, but as far as the company, the you know the golden goose, right? It's the one making all the money. That's that's the thing he's working for. We just simply change the ownership so that he's not the exclusive owner, and then it avoids all the possibility of if he loses the creditor from levying the company's accounts for his individual debt. That's another example. You can do that right in the middle of the litigation. Yeah. Okay, so what would you suggest as our next step then? I would look at if, so what are you doing? Are you investing in cryptos? Yes. Okay, so I would just set up a an entity to do that. I wouldn't do that individually. I would uh, use a limited liability company or maybe something in Canada that could act in the same capacity that would hold the property rights and be an entity that's separate from yourself. Okay. Probably an would LLC that domesticated. Would you then have to tra like transfer, and I'm putting air quotes, the wallet to the yeah. LLC? Yeah, Do you, you have transfer to transfer the coins from one wallet to another, yes. 
do you then have do you have to prove that you've trans well okay, obviously it when it moves to the other wallet it's transferred but do you have to do any You don't have to describe hey how, why it was transferred. The fact is okay that it was transferred legally. okay You had okay the right to do it. So it's and it's then on anything the blockchain. that i okay Yeah. anything that we should know because we transferred funds from our business account to personal to make the crypto investments is there anything Oh, okay. Well, okay. So it's outside of the company now. because we didn't at least based on what we knew up until this point we at So least you're, didn't want it you, to be tapped this is after, it's after tax money. So you're kind of free and clear to do what you want. And depending on what you do, you could create a new tax liability, but it is after tax money right now. That's the best. When you have after, after tax money, you're kind of free to do what you want. So um, I would just be careful about how I place it with maybe it's going to be a pass through, right? Like we use here, an LLC. You could take it from your personal holdings and put it into the purview, the LLC, the ownership, the account for the LLC. And then it would have the tax treatment that you've chosen. If you keep it in your name, it's by default, it's going to be the same tax treatment. You can't get out from under that. But if you put it into the company, you can then change your tax treatment. And then, yeah, we don't have anything like an LLC here in Canada. It's either your I'm just sole going to say, proprietor, yeah, partner, yeah, at first, at or first about corporate. five years ago, I was doing uh, LLPs in Canada and it was really cumbersome. And I, after a while, I realized that the banks were friendly to LLCs and it didn't matter that your government didn't recognize them. And so Okay. we always get the banks to just do them. And I just say, pick New Mexico, put your articles in New Mexico. You don't have to keep filing articles. articles every year you don't have to renew the charter it, it's it's perpetual and then just take that new mexico filed articles your uh your province has a form to register what's called an extra provincial company so you do your regular registration but then you add in that form and it'll recognize it and then your bank over there in canada will recognize that yeah a domesticated llc Okay. It's so just to confirm the uh, process in the U.S., let's say we're in California, we've invested in uh, cryptocurrency as an individual with our after-tax money. At this point, if we wanted to um, defer or lower our tax liability, we open up an LLC, we create a wallet under the name of that LLC uh, or a, a crypto wallet, um, and then we would transfer the um cryptocurrencies from our individual wallet to the um, LLC Yes. wallet. And that's essentially the process. And then when we do, when we do maybe cash out at one point to a, a bank account owned by that LLC, then at that point we would have, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. more advantaged Yeah, tax yeah, situation. but you can have a different tax treatment. You Right. can you can get out of that. You can you can destroy that by ignoring the company and claiming that as your money. And people do that sometimes. They don't know any better. But if you keep it in that company and use it without incurring a gain, you can still spend the money and get the things you want. Just don't, you know, if you paid something personal like a living expense, that would just be small amount of your income. So yeah, you could avoid any tax liability because all you did was change the beneficial interest. You changed the title of the same beneficial interest. That's what you're doing. It was in your title personally, and now it's in a new company's title. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much.